Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Well, I wanted to first start off a video by saying that I haven't uploaded in about two weeks and I'm sorry for that. I have not had a video recording program on my computer in order to record this. So, basically, in the last two weeks, I've been thinking a lot about Yu-Gi-Oh! and the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I've been dueling, you know, quite a bit, and I had many, many, many interesting videos that, you know, I wish I had recorded because it would have been so good, you know, like the quality of the duel, the suspense. I had this duel against this heretic deck, and I beat him 2 0. But it was amazing. Like, I was lost. The duel was over. I had no shot at winning the duel. And I drew a dark hole. Just when I had like 1400 life points, I drew a dark hole after surviving his OTK. And I dark holed him. Then I summoned Neo Spatian Ground Mole, and I kept attacking, attacking, attacking. And eventually. I won the duel. And you know, that duel really, really, really reminded me of how much I missed recording. Because all the other videos I had were nothing compared to that heretic duel I had. And you know, I love my videos, but you know, I really, really, really wish that some of the duels that I've had, you know, could be shared with other people so they can understand my experiences and why I have a lot of the thoughts that I have. So. Every, everybody, I just want to say hello to you all and uh, thank you for subscribing. I've had quite a few subscribers in the last two weeks, but even though I have a very small audience. And, um, you know, I'm just glad that, you know, I'm back and I'm ready to make videos again because I have a lot of thoughts that I think should be shared. So today we're going to be talking about three cards that basically are not played at all and one of these cards I will have to say I think is the best side decking card in today's meta and it makes no sense to me why people don't side it now let's start off with DD Crow DD Crow is a nice card okay you can discard it during any player's turn, target one card in your opponent's graveyard, banish that target. Great, it's a minus one, but you subtract one card from your opponent's graveyard, you banish it during any moment. So if your opponent's trying to bring out a BLS or a Dark Arm, summon DD Crow, end of story. Now, that's a great card. And there's a recent trap card that came out called Dimension Slice. Now, long story short, when this card first came out, I thought this card was going to be the shit. I thought this was going to be the best trap card to balance out this horrible ban list that Konami gave us. I thought this card was going to change Yu-Gi-Oh forever, especially with the way the people special summon like crazy nowadays. And especially because today's game is all about exceed summoning. And I still think Dimension Slice is an amazing card that no one uses except for my friend my friend board whose name I don't want to use to pr protect his you know identity and um you know basically this card works well in his deck because he understands how how good it is you know I'm really I feel really sad for some duelists because you know there's some there's so many cards out there that people don't use in today's metagame. And it's sad. It's sad to the point where I'm making a video to talk about how sad it is. You know, people would be such better duelists if they actually looked at some of these great cards that exist and actually used them. An example is Shrink. Shrink versus Forbidden Lance. Yes, we know the Forbidden Lance is better. But Shrink should also get some play. I mean, it's a pretty good card, and in many ways, it can be better than Book of Moon because if you're when your opponent attacks, you shrink him. You shrink before you can run over his monster, 
if you cut an opponent's monster in half, you're essentially, you know, making it a lot easier for you to run it over with almost any monster. So if you have a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, and I have, uh, I don't know, a Breaker the Magic Warrior on my side of the field or something, that a Breaker that's already used his effect, and now he's at 1600 that breaker can take out that red eyes with these or if that red eyes was attacking the breaker that red eyes would get killed because since it's a quick play it would kill the monster I don't understand why more people don't use shrink shrink is an amazing card and especially because it's a quick play so you can chain it to many things you heavy storm me I chain it to your your face up monster so now, now you're not gonna attack and if you do attack your monster gets destroyed so it's basically like a trap spell card. So it makes no sense why people don't use Shrink. I know Forbidden Lance is good. But I also think Shrink should get some put. Um, apart from that, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, because this is an on-the-spot video. I just decided to come up with these thoughts. And, uh, wait, what did I just say? I decided to come up with these thoughts. I came up with these thoughts, I mean, and, uh, but most importantly, it's this beautiful card right here. Yes, the artwork is amazing, it has, you know, a nice attractive woman on it, but most importantly, its effect is overly broken in today's metagame, and it makes no sense whatsoever why people don't use this card. The card is Soul Release. As you can see, if you can read, please explain to me why duelists don't use this card. This card is the shit. It is the best side decking card in today's game because today we have cards like Insectors, we have cards like Chaos Dragons, we have cards like Dark Worlds, we have a lot of cards that focus their deck around the graveyard. Yes, people say, well, you know, fuck this. I'm going to make Gravekeepers because, you know, there's so many decks that focus on the graveyard. No, 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 no. Stick with whatever deck you're using. Whatever it is. But just side in a soul release and your life will become better. You will have a feeling of enlightenment. I promise you, I promise any of you, please, if anybody is hearing my words right now, don't argue, don't put your thoughts into this, don't think of anything else except for what I'm about to say. This card is amazing, and words speak for itself. Put that card in your deck without me having to explain anything. And you will see how good Soul Release is against side decking, <clears throat> against um, cards like Insectors and Dark Worlds and Chaos Dragons, that you will say, oh my god, why don't people use this card? All I have to say is this. If you have Insector Hornet, Insector Centipede, another Insector Centipede, and an Insector Dragonfly, in your opponent's graveyard along with a howling insect and you activate soul release you get rid of all of those cards because remember insectors live and die by the hornet your opponent opens up with foolish burial puts hornet in the graveyard and leaves him there because a lot of time insector players don't like to keep their hornet on the card they like to keep it in the grave they don't always want it equipped because they usually have already finished using the effect. So what you do is you soul release them. You soul release the Hornet. They can only use one Foolish Burial and Insector players don't play Armageddon Knight anymore. So, end of problem. End of the problem. And end of story. You go against Dark Worlds. <clears throat> they have Graffa in the Grave. They have a bunch of random Dark World monsters. 
that you know they're gonna remove from their field spell so they can draw a card and then discard. Activate soul release. Remove five dark world monsters from the grave. They have nothing. Nothing to use. Graph is gone forever because you can't levy year it. You can't use levy year's effect to get Grapha back because Grapha is too fucking strong. And his level is too damn high. And also Chaos Dragons. Jesus Lord. Chaos Dragons are probably the most susceptible to soul release. You use soul release on a Chaos Dragon deck that has Darkness Metal, Darkness Metal, Pulsar, Pulsar, Dark Flare. Remove all of them. Your opponent opens up with Future Fusion. You respond with Soul Release. They're fucked. They have nothing they can do because their whole deck revolves around special summoning from the graveyard using remove from play monsters like Chaos Sorcerer, Envoy, all of those cards. They have nothing to get off of. And if you have two soul releases, it's even better. So, please, anybody who's hearing my plea, thank Yu-Gi-Oh players. I just want to make a video to open up your minds and think of cards that may be good for your deck and use them. Don't think it sucks. You know, Dark Bribe is another great card, and I made a, one of my early videos, I talked about Dark Bribe. I have a very, 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 very high win ratio with a creative deck that I made from scratch, using cards that nobody uses, and I use them effectively. So that's my point to you all, guys. You don't need archetypes to be the best tools in the world. Put your mind and work on a deck for six months like I worked on my Apocalypse deck. And I promise you, you will have a top tier deck that is one for the years. Thank you guys for watching this video and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.